Hello, my name is Matt, and welcome to the channel. I'm going to be putting together, fun way, my next level racing wheel stand 2.0. I'm going to have, you know, put together this wheel stand. I'm really excited to do so because I can get my desk back and I can fold up the wheelbase and put it wherever it needs to go whenever I'm done. So please enjoy this uh, time lapse of me putting this together. Now, I necessarily wouldn't call it much of a time lapse, but uh, approximately two and a half to three hours worth of footage that was cut down to approximately a five minute. Um, assembly video per se. So here's a lot of shots of me struggling to open the box. It's not that the box is difficult to open, it's just that I'm not very good with hand-eye coordination, I suppose. And ta-da, that's the box. So here's me struggling more with scissors, as you do. I probably should have used the box cutter with that a lot easier. So then we'll dump out the package itself, which includes two parts mainly, which is the stand um, itself, as well as a box that has all of your individual connecting parts. So I'll put that off to the side a little bit there. We'll open up our box of everything. So in the box, you're going to get the foot plate to where your pedals will connect to. The next part here is where the wheelbase itself will connect to as well as, well, great sound, as well as these two pieces there, that's to adjust the angle of the foot plate, uh, two feet up there, kind of in the middle, and then the spot where your chair will fall into to make sure that it doesn't roll away. Those two plates there are for the shifter, and that's a giant bag of screws. And then this part, next couple pieces are going to be for the shifter, apart from those, those are back for the chair, the instruction manual, and then the shifter arm. So first step being, uh, remove the zip ties on it. I kept that in because I was just hysterical watching myself fumble about. So remove the zip ties so you can actually uh, open up the rig itself. You'll take that first part and you'll just kind of connect it up at the back there. There's a little hole to put in the uh, hand thread screws. Most of the screws here are going to be hand thread, whether they're, they've got those nice knots on it or not. No Allen keys included, a little bit awkward. Speaking of awkward, here's a shot of me drinking water. Perfect. So this time lapse here is just me kind of sorting out all the screws. There's gonna be uh, three different types of screws and there are gonna be two sets of washers for uh, some of those screws there. And kind of a medium sized and a very small sized screw. The smaller screws are for mounting the wheelbase itself to the rig and the more medium sized ones are gonna be for assembling the rig itself. It does include four little feet for the uh, stand so it doesn't slip around. And then of course, two stickers for next level racing. So again, these two side plates will go on. They'll adjust the angle itself of the uh, foot plate. So if you wanna really angle it up for which, uh, whichever reason, if you just really hate your shins for whatever, you can do that. It's kind of the best shot of that moment too, that I had. So slide it in here. Uh, in this spot, you can actually move the foot plate forward and back quite a lot. There's five different holes to put uh, screws into uh, to be able to, if you want your uh, pedals to be really close to, or really far away, depending on your height. So in this part, you've got a screw that threads all the way through and then you attach a nut on the other side. Uh, you've got uh, two in the front to just kind of like the pivot point and then the you know, ones in the back are going to be holding it in uh, together. So that will be something that you'll adjust a little bit that uh, to get the right angle of the wheelbase. And then that was actually held together uh, that you'll unscrew and then it'll release the system to adjust the height. And then you'll be able to take those uh, four screws or you know two sets of two on either side, put them back in and to get that right height uh, to, to make the most uh, comfortable experience for sim racing. Uh, a lot of this is gonna be on your back, so be prepared for that. You know, getting a big space open for it. So in this part, we've got a shifter arm. Uh, the setup in the instruction manual is for mainly Europeans, so it'll be with the idea of the shifter being on the left side. 
for the Americans, uh, the few of us who have the shifters on the right, you have to do all these steps mirrored, upside down, or in reverse. It's a little bit weird. Uh, there's a lot of awkward thumb screwing sections. So be aware of that. I, I might make a separate video later on um, you know doing it for the uh, United States side. But that is the European side finished. And then I had to go back after realizing that they didn't include steps or the American side to redo it all again. So that's what the right hand side will look like. So then we'll attach the feet on the rake now that we're not going to be sliding it around a whole lot. We'll be attaching these brackets to the foot plate. So again, that's where your uh, office chair will slide into. So I mean, uh, initial impressions about this, now that it's finally built, is that the material is like stainless steel or aluminum. I'm, I'm not sure which one it is, but it is like a solid, thick metal. It's rather rigid. Um, the current setup that you may have seen that I may have also talked about in voiceover is that the shifter uh, little arm it was definitely meant for if you're shifting on the left side. So if you are from America, land of the free, although things are not free, they're expensive, um, you'd want to take each step and f mirror it. It's a little bit weird. They don't actually specify it. Again, I'll probably have like the instruction booklet up on the side. Um, but yeah, it was just a little bit of a weird part. So when you're building it, it'll be meant for the left, but then you got to redo it later. Um, so now I'm going to do the fun part of dismantling my entire setup with the wheels and the uh, CSL DD. I'm going to have to now mount it to here. Um, I feel very far away with the current setup, so I don't know if I need to move the um, chair plate, whatever it sticks into, and move that forward. I think I'm probably going to have to move the pedals this way, a little bit closer towards me, so I can... I'm six foot, and this is like meant for people that are like six five. It's like, mm, yeah, okay. <laughs> so let me go do that real quick. Well, technically speaking, I'm not quite done with this yet. I'll show you guys later. I still have to do some cable management and, uh, you know, getting this properly set up. But for the time being, you know, as it's now fully assembled and I'm starting to get everything plugged in, it is nice and sturdy. Like there's like no give at all in this up part. Yeah, when you're like doing some braking, I noticed that the bottom uh, plate would be kind of moving around. I couldn't tell if that was because I couldn't tighten it enough or if it was, I don't know, just part of it. But, I mean, I am currently in love with this. This is nice and sturdy, nice rigid, and I imagine will actually be uh, good enough for the CSL DD. So thank you all for watching and tuning in here. If you like this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, tell me what kind of uh, wheel stance or uh, sim rigs or whatever you guys have at home. Let me know what you guys have there, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, about this setup as well. So of course, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. Take care, bye. So hello and welcome. It is now uh, approximately two days later. I've had a couple of days of uh, testing out this rig and the setup and everything. And it's fantastic. The rigidity of the um, 2.0 honestly makes it feel like there's no real reason to go to like the wheel stand DD unless if you're actually going to throw a podium wheelbase on top of it because with this right here even with the um, 8 newton meter power supply attachment or additional uh, power supply for the CSL DD um, there is like no movement I mean there is very minute amounts just due to the nature of vibrations they got to dissipate their energy somewhere and the uh, wheelbase well the the wheel stand does an absolutely spectacular job of doing that and of course i wanted to make mention here with this camera angle as well showing proof that yes i do have my trusty wheelbase or wheel stand and it's just not my wheelbase taped to my desk over here so uh yes i am in fact using this so hopefully they're going to put me somewhere towards the back of the grid. 
So I can do kind of a last to first race here. And if I'm put up in front, I'm going to be a little bit mad. I'm at the very front. Okay. I'm just kind of going to let everybody pass. Because I want to have some fun with this. It might take me a moment to remember what the feeling of the car is. And just how to get my grip where it needs to go. I remember I was actually able to do a, uh, a rouge flat, but with the AI. They're like, oh no, it's a hell, and the racing line, for whatever reason, says I should be braking like I'm in a GT3 car. No, you do not. <laughs> They're gonna come up here. I'm gonna get hit on the inside a little bit. I'm gonna break down here. I gotta get my map. The map returns. So we're gonna go down to turn 10. I'm gonna break very late. Get tapped on the inside again. Rear end somebody in front of us because they decided to randomly break. But we're gonna take the inside. I'm gonna hit him again. Get him out of the way, Ferrari. There we go. Take him up on the inside. Break heavily here just for a second. Kind of a wonky inside corner, but we're gonna take it down to turn 13. Go down to third. See if we can go on the outside. Yes, we can. Apparently he was able to catch up to tap us a little bit there. Down to second gear, a little bit wide. I think I might have been a gear lower than I should have been. Then we're gonna come up through uh, turn 17. But honestly, this was just amazing uh, the other day. Gonna go on the outside. Oh, gonna hit him again. Oh, this is not good. So when I tried this the other day, I was able to get out in front of first, and I was able to uh, just start setting laps. And after playing Spa for a couple of laps, I, I set some pretty blistering fast laps. I think I needed to be in first gear. Oh! That's alright. Gives us a little bit more of a challenge. But one of the things that I did at the end of the day, too, was I was able to successfully do a fake-out overtake. And it just felt natural. So I want to see if I can almost do it again. It won't be for a little bit yet, though. Because we're going to need some actual straightaways to go do it. Or I'll just take him up on the inside. So the only issue with <laughs> this car and this wheel setup is that I've got the flapping paddle gearbox, which is definitely not authentic to the uh, Formula One cars of the late 80s, early 90s. So I'm just trying to even imagine doing this with one hand and then changing gears with the shifter. I don't know if I'd be able to do it very well at this skill level. A little bit wide there. Tap on the brakes. Follow our line to the outside. So I just... I love this so much. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, man. I can't even take this flat. <sighs> I remember from when I was doing this the other day, too, with that specific spot as well. I was like... It seemed like that they had the brake marker for the racing line out, like, 200 yards, and I figured out that you could probably brake at, like, 100 or whatever. And be able to make the turn just fine, so it's... The racing line is pretty arbitrary at the moment, because it says brake, 
flat. <laughs> it's just... Uh, I'm speechless. It's just... Finally being able to have a direct drive wheel. Or at least a wheel to race on. Honestly, if I had a CSL Elite... I'd probably be equal, equally happy. I kind of figured this is going to be a longer video, uh, probably at least 45 minutes in my mind. So, you know, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I've had an absolute great time with this so far. Uh, the process of building it, I want to say, was over two hours easy. And with the additional time of capable management, at least another hour, hour and a half on my back, you know, just getting everything taped up, trying to do different methods of, of um, you know, coiling up cables and then twist tying them to certain places. Uh, nice thing about the, the little deck here is that it's got a couple little lips that hang underneath. So you can actually either do cable runs all the way around or actually cable things up. And I did a lot of pressure fit. It's you just kind of circle up your cables and just by putting the cable against itself, pushing against the ledges, uh, really, really did help. So I even got my power supply um, crazy glued to the bottom of this too. And it just, the cable runs look amazing and they give you a lot of great options of being able to do um, cable management with the, with the wheel stand. So I'm very, very happy with my purchase. It's incredibly sturdy insanely heavy it does fold yes it would have been nice to be able to have a method to keep the pedals upright when you're putting them away so they don't kind of flop around as you're moving about but yeah because it's so rigid and made out of stainless steel it's 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 heavy so it's it's nice and sturdy i have no no issues with it apart from that and um uh, you know happy with my purchase so again if you made it this far thank you for watching i've had a great time with this so if you like this uh content make sure to like comment and subscribe i'm gonna have some more videos coming out especially reviewing this guy I just got it recently like a day before the wheel wheel stand um and i've been loving it too so stay tuned for more of that content so again thanks so much for watching hope you guys have a great day take care bye